my friends, are you ready? Because we are headed into the Isoverse. Is this some kind of new superhero neighborhood? No, but it could very well make the world a better place. And no superhero capes, magical powers, or masks involved. We're talking about the engineering superpowers of isolation. In order to move forward with innovations on the intelligent edge, including e-mobility, Industry 4.0, and sustainable energy solutions, we need to take a closer look at isolation and how it can help foster the adoption of high-voltage charging solutions and robust and reliable high-speed communication. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, I'm joined by Allison Lemus, Maurizio Granado, and Carthy Gopalan from Analog Devices. And we investigate how isolation can assist in a variety of intelligent edge applications, including smart building control, the enablement of Industry 4.0, and more. And we also take a closer look at analog devices, iCoupler, digital isolation technology, and how this technology can encourage innovation, big and small. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from analog devices. Hi, Carthy. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thank you for having us. Uh, it's great to reconnect with you, especially after a couple of eventful years. I always get excited knowing I get to talk to your fan base, aka the creative engineering community. I am Karthi Gopalan, the general manager for the flagship ISO BU at ADI. With me, I have two brilliant individuals, Maurizio Granato, who is my dynamic product line director, who runs Performance ISO and a future shaper, Alison Lemus, who works in our advanced technology group. And what connects me, Maurizio, and uh, Alison is at a meta level, we all are designers. Excellent. Okay, so Karthi, we're talking about ADI's ISOverse today. But before we dig into the details, Let's start with isolation. Can you give my audience a refresher about the functions of isolation? Let me set the stage as to what the isolation function looks like. Isolation, in essence, protects people, data, and equipment. Kind of like a superhero heroine. It provides means for wired communication from point A to point B without DC current flow, Enabling protection, safety, and accuracy. That is mission critical in many end markets. In addition to that, part of the ISO functionality is also to keep the data flow robust and secure, especially in high-speed data transfer-like scenarios. Overall, it is usually required where there is presence of high voltage, the need for long distance, and high precision communications. It's also driven by safety standards such as UL, VDE, IEC, CSA. Okay, so can you give me some more details about who in particular we're talking about here? Our technology right now, right, is increasingly critical and is playing an essential element in five of the biggest mega markets driving the semiconductor industry, namely Industry 4.0, e-mobility, instrumentation, sustainability and energy, and digital healthcare. What we enable is migration of advanced, sophisticated electronics to hazardous environments, such as a factory floor, EV car, smart grids, instruments, wherein there's a whole lot of human machine interface to patient safety. And the key safety dependent applications Encompassing the space is precision robotics, efficient electric motors, machine vision, autonomous machines, to medical imaging. So, Karthi, how are you going about doing this? Well, Amelia, our commitment to you and your viewers is to provide robust data and power transfer in the presence of 
electromagnetic interference, such as high voltage, like in the case of mains or high voltage battery, high noise, like in the case of spikes related to industrial or medical environments. Via our innovation around polyamide-based microscale isolated transformer, we advanced the boundaries beyond what the optocouplers could offer. Optocouplers are the traditional solutions that are available today. We eliminate uh, penalties associated with these uh, traditional solutions, such as low bandwidth, wear out due to CTR degradation over time, uh, being kludgy and being large form factored, where especially where multi-channels come into the picture. Our initial goal for ISO evolved over time, and now we support our markets as the safety solution provider, which includes several added functions, courtesy of our very scalable material and architecture. So what we have added is, we have added performance functions such as isolated interfaces, power supply, gate drivers, voltage and current sensing, all in a single platform. As in, it's a SIP solution, a system in a package for the entire isolated application needs. Let me show you a world where our ISO SIP solution is not available. It does make the multiverse pretty intimidating. Now, let's look at a modern factory ecosystem wherein ADI's ISO iCoupler solution comes into play. Let's take a closer look at what the protection from our ISO enables us to do and how we are looking ahead with our portfolio. As industrial automation becomes our new reality, the factories of today are more electronically complex than ever before and at the same time more vulnerable to disruptions due to electric surges, noise, etc. So the effective interaction with say the cyber physical systems like robots and cobots is going to make or break our transition into industry 4.0 and beyond. And that's why our ISO's highly integrated up the stack solution provides robust, compact and resilient data and power transfer solutions that meet all these challenges. Let me now transition to what goes beyond the industry 4.0 bubble. When you think of a modern factory floor, right? People come in and go out. You need cargo to come in and go out. So industry 4.0 ecosystem also depends on modernized transportation to efficiently and sustainably transport people and material. And this is where our ISO's high voltage, high power solutions reinforce the battery management systems that aid our transition to fully electrical vehicles. Also, ISO's gigaspeed interface solution enables this high-speed communication between them while still ensuring a high-fidelity signal in the presence of EMI. And out here, you get a complete view of what does this beautiful ADI's ISOverse looks like and these are some of the impacts ISO is making in the industry today, but an increasingly mobile world is relying on cutting edge communication and power. So what we make sure is that the various vertical markets that I mentioned becomes fully reliant on green energy. We are pushing to gigaspid and the technology advancements that fall out of from that will all require the robust protection our solution offers. As we continue to protect this intelligent edge, we at ADI are prepared to meet the increasingly complex ISO challenges of an increasingly complex world. So speaking of the future of energy, Maurizio, I would imagine that this kind of integrated isolation would be a good fit for e-mobility and EV applications. Thank you, Amelia. Yes, absolutely. We now move to what we call system on wheels, which is the definition of e-mobility. And the main aspect of the sustainable revolution is really the electric vehicle, which is really enabled by high voltage batteries. 
You know, the batteries on our car typically operated at 400 volts and 800 volts. And the reason to go to such high voltage is because they do two things. Number one, they enable long range, which is really what each of us need when we go and we visit, you know, our beloved ones or we go to fun adventures. And number two is that it enables fast charging, which is one, if not the most important stepping stone to make electric cars adoptable by the widest audience. So what I'd like to do today is to give you some example on how this high voltage revolution can only be enabled through highly integrated isolation. Okay, so can you talk a bit more about why we need isolation here? Yeah, for sure. So here we have just a high level representation of some of the microelectronic content in a car, the car of the future. And you can see four key subsections that I've highlighted here the onboard charger, the DC DC converter, the traction inverter, and the battery management system. And the reason you see there two colors is because the red color discriminated the high voltage section which is unsafe because it's, as I said, many hundreds volt, and the low voltage section, which is safe for users and for maintenance people to touch and to interact with. So what I would like to describe is the fact that, as you can see, onboard charger is what takes the energy from the grid and recharges your battery. The DC-DC is what is converting the energy from the battery, and it brings to different levels that are needed for things like you know, heating or infotainment. Then the traction inverter is transforming the electrical energy from the battery into the mechanical energy to move the car. And finally, the BMS, the battery management system, which takes care of the battery reliable operation. Now, this diagram is clearly showing you the fact that you need several isolation functions like isolation sensing, isolated communication, isolated gate drivings, all the functions that Carti has mentioned in order to have reliable and effective operation. Okay, so Maurizio, speaking of sustainability, we also need to talk about the smart grid as well, right? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, the wider context of sustainability and sustainable energy is really the grid. And that as well requires high voltage power transfer in order to be efficient and minimize losses in ca inside cables. I'm sure you realize that the only way to minimize those losses is to use high voltage, hence low currents. So what I'd like to do today, Amelia, is to provide you and all our listeners some tangible examples on how sustainable energy can be implemented with the power of high voltage and the protection of isolation. Okay, fantastic. Can you give me an example of this in action? Of course. I think the best example really is a smart grid energy meter. There are pieces of technologies that are fundamental to implement an energy meter. After you do sensing of phase current and voltage that you see on the left, you almost immediately need isolated power supply and isolated data transfer. And this is represented across that isolation barrier that you see there. So you are effectively protecting from the 200 volt or the 120 volt that you have in the house to a processing unit, like an application processing unit or an embedded processor. And then in turn, that processor is transferring the information to a central network. And that could be either via wireless or it could be via wired. And now in the case of wired infrastructure, we most likely again have the requirements for isolated USB or isolated ethernet. So this is a clear example of how you want to sense the energy through the smart grid, process it locally at the, at the edge really, and once you turn the intelligent edge into information, that information has to be sent reliably to the network. And again, isolation comes into place very often. So another important aspect of this theme is smart buildings and the control of those buildings, right? Yeah, we would say that healthy buildings include several features that are really part of the modern world. And those can include air quality control, smart power, as we described before, resilient operation of power with energy storage, building safety, and also load monitoring. Because, for example, you want to make sure that the loads that are connected to the grid are not getting heavier and older and aging. And so that means that 
they are creating unwanted load and inefficient operation. So the incredible amount of data exchange that you have in a building nowadays requires really compact and ubiquitous gateways. And what I'd like to do is to give you today also one example of those gateways. So what you see here is a building controller for a small building, and that is called multi-protocol controller for a reason. The reason is that it really requires to interact with so many different end equipments, as I mentioned before, air control, power control, safety. So you need to operate with several different languages. Those could include RS-485, RS-232, CAN area network, and even the most modern and fastest one, like Ethernet and wireless. Now, the only way to make this building control technology ubiquitous is to make these gateways very compact and reliable to use in any kind of noisy environment, like in presence of fans or motors. For this reason, the ADI isolation technology is aiming at providing the fastest and more reliable data and power transfer so that system integrators can quickly adopt in shorter than desired cycles. Okay, so Allison, Industry 4.0 is a huge topic these days, right? This would fit into this overall theme as well. Yes, of course. In a factory floor, operators work with a lot of different technology. And in Industry 4.0, the density of that technology is higher than ever. The whole system has to work very cohesively and will include different protocols. You need data transfer, you need power transfer, and all of this needs to be as integrated as possible. Isolation allows that data and power transfer to happen. Plus, now you've added EMC robustness so they can work in these dense, noisy factory environments. Okay, so can you give me an example? Sure. This is an example of an industrial controller communication module. Adding isolation here doesn't have to come at the cost of speed. Isolation can be integrated between board to board or cable interfaces and can be used in a daisy chain configuration like what's shown in this example. Using high bandwidth isolated LVDS signaling, the resulting propagation delay can be limited to just over a couple nanoseconds per isolator. Our isolator solutions can accommodate transmit and receive signals at speeds up to 1.25 gigabits per second. So Allison, there's also a big trend in terms of human-machine interface these days. Can this kind of isolation help me here as well? Oh, definitely. The future of instrumentation is benefiting from isolation advancements in a similar way to what we talked about with Industry 4.0. It's ensuring the safety for the operator of the equipment, and at the same time, it's offering robust signal integrity, all in compact form factors. Isolation technology can be found in source meters, data loggers, and handheld equipment. Users directly interact with these measurement tools, so there is a safety benefit to including isolation within this equipment. At the same time, this equipment can be used in noisy environments and in the presence of EMC transient threats. Without the data integrity afforded from isolators, we can't always rely on the accuracy of this measurement equipment. This block diagram shows just one example where three isolators are helping protect the integrity of measurement data. Let's move on to healthcare. Frontline workers are critical members of our society, and we want to make sure that the medical equipment they're using isn't putting them in harm's way. Isolation technology provides safety for medical professionals and the patients they serve. At the same time, we want to make sure the data that healthcare providers have access to is precise, so diagnoses are as accurate as possible. Isolation technology helps ensure this by making medical equipment more robust against EMC transient threats. Okay, so trusted safety also plays a very important role here as well, right? Yes, and we definitely saw this during the COVID-19 pandemic. The value of being able to remotely monitor patient vitals cannot be overstated. However, today's ventilators are not set up with the corresponding external displays and connecting to an unverified commercial display 
can potentially introduce a hazardous voltage path from the ventilator to the patient. And that would be really bad, right? In order to ensure the safety of the patient while using a ventilator that can be remotely monitored, isolation must be used. Our gigabit isolator technology is compatible for HD video transmission, giving medical professionals more precise information to make their assessments. So, Allison, does analog devices have any evaluation boards or reference designs to help me in this area? Yes, we do. <laughs> Let's use an example of the ADN4654, ADI's gigabit isolator solution, and how it's helping three major pillars in healthcare. For clinical monitoring, the incorporation of isolation is made easy with ADI's isolated front end solutions with pin compatibility that can seamlessly drop in between existing systems. For imaging, there is a reference design to add isolation to HDMI, which is a non-trivial complex signal chain with power and sideband signals that have traditionally left few isolation options. Additionally, demonstrated MAC and PHY links are suitable for the incorporation into equipment that interfaces with medical PCs. Okay, so we've talked a lot about how these solutions can protect people and the sustainability applications, but this is also about protecting the planet as a whole, right? Yes, what we've shown is an eagle eye view of how isolation solutions protect people and the planet, ranging from electric vehicles to industrial applications, residential applications, all the way to smart energy. In the near future, the whole power grid will function as a smart neural system. An eye coupler is just like the synapses that are embedded in every node of the complex system. All right. Well, that was a lot to take in today. Thank you so much for joining me, Allison. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you for letting us show how ISO envisions to protect the intelligent edge. And thank you for joining me, Maurizio. Thank you, Amelia. And thank you very much for hosting us in this journey with isolation in a sustainable world. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Carthy. Thank you very much, Amelia. It was a privilege to be talking to you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from analog devices. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.